Welcome back to TEC Tube. Today's topic for you guys is the basic refrigeration cycle. So we're going to explain that to you and how it works so you have a better understanding of how air conditioners and heat pumps function. We'll do it both on the computer so you can kind of see the, the layout of things. And we'll also take a step over here into our North Aurora lab and show you the physical components as well. So let's get started. We're taking a look at a refrigerant piping diagram here to show you the basic components and we'll also look at it in the lab as well to show you what they physically look like in real life. So up here on the top left hand of, of my screen, you see I have a condensing unit outside and I have a fan coil with an evaporator coil on the inside. It could easily be a furnace with an evaporator coil as well. So inside the home or inside the building, the job of that coil is to absorb heat from the house, transfer that heat through the piping, and then dump that heat into your yard. Right, so that's how we're actually doing stuff. We're not actually making your house cold. I mean, we are, but we're really removing the heat from a house and dumping it outside into your yard. Now it's kind of weird because heat always goes from hot to cold. So we're taking it from your cool house and putting it into your hot yard. It's kind of weird. So we've got to play a little bit games with the pressures to make that happen. Pressure, temperature, and volume are inherently connected to one another. And if I have a fixed volume like I have on a refrigerant piping system and I change the pressure of something, the temperature must change. There's no ifs, ands, buts or about it. So we got those things work together no matter what. So when I look at the piping diagram here, I have four major components on a refrigeration cycle. I have my condenser coil, which for a typical residential split system that's out in your yard, it's part of your condensing unit. I have a compressor, which is also part of your condensing unit. Then inside the building, I have my evaporator coil and my TXV. And the TXV and evaporator coil are typically in one assembly as well. So visually, it looks like I have two things, but really there's four major components of the refrigeration cycle. The condenser coil and the evaporator coil are doing opposite jobs of each other, and the TXV and the compressor are doing opposite jobs of each other. Condenser coils absorb heat, excuse me, condenser coils reject heat, evaporator coils absorb the heat. Compressors compress the refrigerant, expansion valves or metering devices allow that refrigerant to go back to a lower pressure. So on the left hand side of my dotted line, I have high pressure and the low, on the right hand side, I have low pressure. So the TXV and the compressor divide those pressure barriers. So let's just uh, follow a refrigerant molecule around the loop here, right? So let's just start with the evaporator. So I have a, a refrigerant molecule sitting there in the evaporator. He is absorbing heat from the air of your house running through your furnace and evaporator coil assembly. He's absorbing that heat, which is raising the temperature of the refrigerant. It's increasing it up as he absorbs that heat. And then that refrigerant is going into the compressor where the compressor's job is to compress the refrigerant to raise the pressure even more. And because I have a fixed volume, when I raise the, the pressure, the temperature goes up as well. So you can see in our example here, I'm starting out with 40 degrees leaving the evaporator or in the evaporator coil, and I'm ending up with 120 degrees in the condenser coil because I raised the pressure from 120 up to 420. So raising that pressure, raise the temperature. So now that that compressor sends that refrigerant to the condenser coil, it's 120 degrees, but my yard's only 90 degrees. So now I can transfer heat from the coil to the yard, to the air outside, because it's going from 120 to 90. So there's a temperature difference there to move the heat. Then inside that condenser coil, as I'm, as I'm removing the heat from the condenser coil and sending it to the outdoors, outdoor air, that is lowering the temperature which eventually causes the refrigerant to condense, which is why we call it a condenser coil. The, the evaporative and condenser words go, go in relation to what's happening with the refrigerant, not what's going on with your air. So it condenses the refrigerant back to a liquid, which is why we call this the liquid line, and that travels over to the TXV. TXV stands for thermal expansion valve. It is a metering type device. Older systems would have had fixed orifices or pistons or something like that. Nowadays, almost everything has a TXV. His job is to meter the refrigerant and control it as it enters into the evaporator, as well as to change the pressure from high back down to low, because he's the opposite of the compressor. And then that goes back into the evaporator coil with a lower pressure, where it can now begin absorbing heat again. That's kind of our basic refrigeration cycle here. You notice we have some of the pipes labeled on here. The hot gas line between the compressor and the condenser, you don't normally see that. That is internal to a condensing unit. Because the condensing unit, if you recall, has the condenser coil and the compressor all in one. So you don't see that hot gas line typically. The liquid line and the suction line are the two lines that you see going from outdoors back indoors to the inside the building. 
And then the line between the TXV and the evaporator is typically all in the evaporator coil as well, so you don't see that unless you take the cover off. Here we are in the lab. We have a furnace with an evaporator coil on top of it. Air from the building or the home is coming through the furnace, because that's where the blower motor is, running through the evaporator coil, where the evaporator coil can absorb heat from the building, and then the air gets cooled down, obviously, when it gives up its heat and gets ducted out to the supply. But that heat goes into the, into the evaporator coil, and then that heat will make its way through the suction line, in our case, up over the ceiling in the lab here. It'll come down into our condensing unit, And as it comes in our condensing unit, the suction line comes through here, goes into the compressor, where the compressor increases its pressure and hence increases its temperature. Then it leaves the compressor, compressor on the hot gas line. If we follow that pipe all the way around, that hot gas line goes into the condenser coil, where it can use all this surface area to reject the heat to the outdoors. And then when it comes back out of the condenser coil and goes into the liquid line, and then the liquid line will make its way back through the piping system, back in, into the indoor side of the building. Now, liquid line will come in this way. It'll go into our TXV, which is a little tough to see in here. And then the TXV's job, once again, is to lower the pressure and hence lower the temperature. So we have cool refrigerant entering to the evaporator coil where it's now cool enough where it can absorb more heat from the air. And then that cycle would repeat itself. Hence why we call it the refrigeration cycle. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of how the refrigeration cycle works in your typical air conditioner or heat pump, and you have a better idea of how to service these things down the road. We'll see you next time.